Masada Garvey's birthday. So let's do it the African way. Make some noise. Say, Marcus! Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Let us give thanks for Marcus Garvey, his energy. He gave us confidence when there was none. He gave us that push when we needed the push. He gave us the pride when we couldn't find it. Make some noise for Marcus Garvey. He's the reason why we're here. And I'm sure, I'm very, very sure, he would definitely encourage this particular subject matter. We have the wonderful Dr. Anthony Hall here to give us the medical cannabis update. Round of applause for Dr. Hall. Yes, Marcus Garvey would support it. Yes, he would. Self-sufficiency, he would support it. Greetings, good friends, Sister Levette. Greetings, one and all. As usual, I have to greet everyone in the divine name of his imperial majesty, Alice Celestia Frost. And for the prophet, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who really showed the way. But, Jabu and Dougie have me under a tight time limit. So, right into it. What are we talking about? We're talking about medical marijuana, medical cannabis, and how it can help your body. Um, there was a, a period of time, which hopefully is almost over, there was a period of time in this country and worldwide when marijuana and cannabis were looked upon as evil products to be avoided at all costs. That was partially a result of certain American politicians in their racial discrimination against Mexicans and black people, such as us. And Slinger. <laughs> yeah, well, you can read all about it, but as I mentioned, the time limit, so, <laughs> Dougie is sharp. So, now what happened was, as a result of that, everybody looked against cannabis as if it was some evil drug, evil plant. Well, now we realize that that is not so. There are actually medications approved by the Food and Drug Administration that are made from cannabis. There is medical cannabis in approximately 150 countries worldwide that's approved, and most of the USA, including our state, Florida. So medical cannabis is approved in Florida, and you can, one, register for your card. You have to seek out a physician who is certified by the state in order to approve you, and then you can register, be registered, place in the registry, and you have to pay for your card. Unfortunately, in Florida, you still have to pay every single year to renew your card, but that might change soon. However, you can then purchase from approximately 144 dispensaries across the state. You can purchase your medical cannabis of multiple different types and delivery systems. How can you take cannabis? Well, everybody knows about rolling up a spliff and burning it, but that is not actually very medical because that can cause you lung disease and, you know, raise carcinogens. So most medical cannabis is delivered through oils or what we call tinctures that go under your tongue or on your skin. They can sometimes be placed in capsules or pills, suppositories. They can be uh, sprayed in through the nose or you can use it as a vaporizer. They have electronic vaporizers and you have face mask vaporizers. Um, for persons who are even can't eat, it can go in through peg tubes and gastrointestinal tubes and things like that. You can use skin patches, creams, lotions, multiple different ways of delivery of medical cannabis. So in Florida, if the product or the medication has less than 0.3% THC, that's considered low THC. And actually, you do not have to buy a card to purchase, you do not have to be registered with a cannabis card to purchase low THC medical cannabis. People sometimes call it uh, CBD, but CBD, as I mentioned, is only one out of hundreds of the cannabinoids that are not THC. So, for example, in the back, I have multiple examples of what we call low THC. It contains CBD, CBN, CBC, CBG, etc., etc. Now, if you want to use THC greater than 0.3%, you have to register. And you have to get a car. 
and you have to buy through a dispensary, and you have to see your physician every six months to be updated and renewed, and your physician has to prescribe it to you to go to the dispensary for you to purchase. So that's how Florida is set up. Many states are different, and you know Florida is going to have on the ballot next year probably uh, a recreational vote, which is a different matter. I'm just talking about medical cannabis, and. What diseases can we treat with this? Well, everybody's heard about seizures because that's the first one that pushed the vote in Florida. And that's low THC, that's CBN, CBD, and CBG, which are really anti-seizure chemicals, cancer. And trust me, there, there, there's some work coming out that shows that some cannabinoids such as CBC are so what we call anti-tumorigenic, meaning they work against cancer cells that hundreds of patients worldwide have seen cancers disappear and go away with this product, with this compound. Uh, what about autism? Autism disorder. I think I spoke about that like two years ago. Autism disorder is very easily managed and even sometimes totally controlled by low THC uh, medical cannabis. Um, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, Coming over the future, folks, like within the next year or two, you're going to see some work on diabetes, hypertension, and even obesity. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm under the 10 minutes sister in a bit. <laughs> Let's welcome now Reese W. Smith on the Cannabis Update. Yes, yeah, I'm a duck, you know. Yeah, the expert in that space. Well, for those religious people that still have some reservation about ganja, you know that thing where the Bible talk about the holy anointing oil? Well, I want you to look it up. Don't take my word. There is a property in it from ancient time known as Kani Bossi. Kani Bossim, cannabis, cannabis, ganja, marijuana, okay, and the reason why it was called the holy anointing oil, the healing oil, because of the ganja that was in it, when, it's the same thing that our grandmother and grandfather used to do, put the ganja in some beer rum, with some pimento, and other herbs, and then, yes, when, when, when the rain, set up and them try and start bother them or the arthritis stick in them take it out and them anoint the holy anoint in the so it's long time people like I Rastafari have been telling the world that ganja is the healing of the nation and as Doc rightly said we're not talking about recreation right now even though recreation has its place we're talking about the medical properties of Ganja, the healing of the nation. Well, giving you a little update right now. As you know, Jamaica went legal medically in um, 2015. They also granted Rastafari sacramental rights, wherein we can grow, smoke, use it. We just can't make no money from it. Well, we are burning that and we're fighting against that right now and we're working with the government to modify that as we speak. But since 2015, in Jamaica, we have been able to do certain research and development. I have been involved with two companies. One, Dr. Hall, Pure Jamaica Island Traders, and Appalon Formularies, two licensed entities in Jamaica. We have been doing research since 2015, and the results that we have seen is eye-opening, magnificent, wonderful, great, in terms of the healing of the nation. Tumor reduction, seizure control, pain management, and we can go on and on. The problem I have right now though in Jamaica is that the industry is being taken over by big corporations, big companies from overseas, that is investing in Jamaica right now. If you look on the stats, 
they say that Jamaica is the third most invested country in the space. The little dot called Jamaica is the third most invested country in the cannabis space. That means that the mega companies from Canada, from US, from Germany, from Israel are right in Jamaica, right now, boys to make the money. While I and I, Rastafari, and the people of Jamaica have borne the blunt of the oppression for Ganja. Because while I and I was prosecuted as Rastafari in Jamaica, Jamaica itself was tagged the Ganja hub. And as such, we have borne that name internationally. So now that it is politically correct to make some money off of the thing, who is he coming again? The same oppressor. Well, we are not standing up for that this Iowa. Like Jabu said, we're not going to make them take Mama Africa from where again. Well, at the same way, we're not giving up the ganja to them. So we are in Jamaica fighting to be in the space. And we are doing the scientific research that is needed to put Jamaica on the map. Not just investing in growing and selling and making oil and selling. That is commercial and that is great. But it's the science of the plant that is going to vindicate the plant, vindicate Rastafari for defending the plant, and prove to the world that it is truly the healing of the nation. What I want from my people is to realize the potential that it has financially. It is a multi-billion dollar industry. So there is money to be made by the island of Jamaica if we do the thing properly. The party that is ruling right now is not the party that amended the law. It's the party that has always been anti-Ganja, anti-Rastafari. So right now, they are posturing, dragging them foot, see, instead of doing what is needed to be done. And we fully understand you know, that it's not easy because we have the reputation of being a transshipment point. We also are part of the first convention treaty that binds our hand in doing certain things. But locally, as a government, we are supposed to be able to structure our local government and our local affairs to serve our citizens. And if the citizens of Jamaica vote for the legalization of marijuana and for the use of medical marijuana, then the government must work fast to make this a reality. So that is what is going on in Jamaica right now. Bureaucracy and politics is holding back progress as usual. Yeah, I'm on give thanks. Round of applause for our cannabis update from Dr. Anthony Hall, Prince Dougie Smith. We needed that update because what is it, Marcus Garvey defense? Self-reliance. And this can get us out of the gutter. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs>